Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today we are here with the 2021 Audi Q5 Sportback. So you'll notice the rear end of this vehicle is a little bit different, and that's because this is a new body style for this model year. So in this review, what I want to do is I want to talk about a little bit about why this is different from the SUV, and I want to talk about why I think this is a great active lifestyle vehicle. I'm also going to tell you about three little things that are driving me a little bit crazy. So let's check it out right now. Now, the most obvious thing that you are gonna notice that makes this different from the regular SUV is going to be the rear end right here. So as you can see, there is just a little bit more of a sloping roof line, which uh, Audi likes to call a coupe-like, a coupe-like exterior. So it's got just more of a sporty physique and it looks to me a lot sleeker. Another difference is going to be these wheels right here. These are special 19 inch alloy wheels. And if you take another look at the roof here, no roof racks. So there are no roof rails up here. That is another difference between the Sportback and the regular SUV. Again, because it's supposed to be sportier. So let's take a quick look inside because there's one more difference that again, speaks to the sporty nature of the vehicle. And that is going to be these seats right here. So they have sport seats here in the front and they're really comfortable and they grip you in pretty well if you wanna do a little bit more of an aggressive drive. All right, so this is not going to be different than the SUV, but I figure you always gotta talk about what's underneath the hood. And underneath the hood of the Q5 Sportback is going to be a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. So this is a four cylinder engine uh, there is an up-level variant available if you go with the SQ5, but that is not this. So this is a four-cylinder. It'll deliver 261 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. Now the zero to 60 mile per hour time is 5.7 seconds. And Audi says that's the fastest in the segment. So I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at all of the other vehicles in the segment to verify that's true, but I'm just gonna believe them. So what I wanna say is, I think this engine does a really good job once you are moving. I do have a small problem with the turbo lag and we're gonna talk about that in a minute when I talk about some of the things that annoy me just a little bit. So while we have the hood open, I'm just gonna point out that everything back here is fairly easy to reach. You've got your oil right here, you have your battery right here in case you need a jump, and then all the way over here, you have your washer fluid. So really easy to pour in and what I wanna say is if I can do it and I'm five feet tall, anybody can reach anything in here. So that's a bit of a bonus as well. The other thing I really like is, hey, you don't have anything to prop up the hood. You just unlatch it here and then lift it up and it stays open. Now, obviously <laughs> I'm a little bit short. So if I wanna put the hood down, I'm gonna to have to come over to the side. But again, you don't have anything cumbersome to unhook or to uh, latch into place. So I like that as well. All right, we've talked about how this is different and we've talked about the engine. So now I wanna jump into why I think this is a great active lifestyle vehicle. So as you can tell, this is not my normal video review attire. My husband and I are going to go on a bike ride and we were able to fit both of our bikes back here. We had put, to put the second row down, but we were able to fit both of our bikes back here without having to take either of the front tires off. And I'm gonna consider that a bit of a win because taking those front tires off can sometimes be a little bit cumbersome and dirty. So I like the fact that these can fit in here without taking the tires off. Um, and there's a couple of little spaces here that you can put in your uh, bike shoes or your helmet. So some good places to store some things while you are transporting your bikes. I would say that is one of the big reasons why this is a great active lifestyle vehicle. I also wanna point out some of the other cubby spaces on the inside. So if you are familiar with me, you'll know that I always habitually carry a large water bottle with me and I'm pleased to report that it fits in the cup holder on the door very well. But here's the thing, you've got two more cup holders in here that will also fit equally large water bottles. And that is definitely appreciated when you're getting ready to do something athletic and go on a bike ride. Uh, so you've got, again, a cup holder in that door. You've got cup holders in the rear doors as well. But what I also really like is the fact that you have some good cubby spaces right here. So I was able to put my keys in there. I set the 
car key in here while I'm driving. If you had two phones, you could set one here, but here's a really cool thing. There's a charging pad and a place to put a phone right here. And it has this nice little slide so you can tuck it back away and put your water bottle in here. If you need access to it while the water bottle is in there, you just lift this up and you have access. So at first I didn't really like it, but the more I am around this pad, the more I like it because it kind of tucks your phone out of the way and keeps you from, you know, touching it <laughs> while you're driving. All right, let's power this up and take a look at some of the tech on the inside. As you can see, this does have the available virtual cockpit. And what that means is you've got this beautiful digital cluster right here that allows you to kind of change the view a little bit. So you have this button right here that allows you to adjust whether you want little gauges or big gauges. And then once you have that, you can scroll through the different settings here to see what you would like to have behind the wheel. I personally really like the map and you can adjust how the map appears using this. You can scroll in, scroll out. I guess that would be scroll out, scroll in, but so this would be the scrolling in part. This would be the scrolling out part just by adjusting here. So I like bringing it in pretty far so I get a really good idea of what I am seeing. There is a 10.1 inch screen here and Audi has done something really nice for this model year in that you can now access wireless CarPlay while you have this activated. Previously, if you wanted to access, like say you had Waze on, then you would get a weird little compass thing behind the, the wheel uh, in that gauge cluster area. But now you can have your Waze on as well as this map view here and you can enjoy them at the same time. So I, I don't know that you would necessarily want to do it, but it's nice that you can do it. So again, Apple CarPlay is wireless and it works really well and is very swipeable. This screen itself is pretty swipeable. I like the functionality. I like, you know, the different views. I think this looks really good and it's fairly easy if you want to change your radio stations just by scrolling through. So all of this I think is a nice feature on the Audi Q5. Now the final reason I think this is a really great active lifestyle vehicle is because it just drives really well. It's very sporty and you, it's aggressive when you want it to be and it handles twisty bits very well. So if you're going to go out to a bike park or a trail someplace to do some riding, you're going to have fun getting there. So I, I think this is a great vehicle for somebody who is on the go, active, and frankly loves to drive. It is now that point in the review where I need to talk about those three things that drive me a little bit crazy. And the first thing has to do with the engine. So as I alluded to earlier, this is a turbocharged engine, which means that there is going to be a little bit of turbo lag. And it's not egregious, it's not, it's not super awful. However, when you combine that with auto stop start, so basically that's the feature in your vehicle that shuts down your engine when you come to complete stop, when you combine the turbo lag with the auto stop start engine, it becomes a little bit of a problem because it's, oh, you want me to go. And if you are taking a left turn, especially into a little bit of a tight window of traffic, that lag is just enough to basically freak me out. <laughs> that, that's the best way to say it because, you know, you have this short window to get into traffic and here, the engine is off, it needs to turn back on, then you've got turbo lag and you're trying to turn a corner. So I, the first thing I typically do when I come into this vehicle is I shut the auto stop start off because I don't even want to deal with it. If I, if I have to deal with just the turbo lag, I can manage it, but the turbo lag in addition to that auto stop start system, that is a non-starter for me. Now what would make me really happy is if you could just hit this button and it would stay off, period, but that's not the case. So whatever. Just know that you're going to want to be careful and you're going to want to make sure you turn that off if you're concerned about turbo lag at all. All right, so the second thing that is driving me a little bit crazy is rear cross traffic alert. I love this feature. It's standard on this vehicle. However, I noticed when I put the vehicle in reverse, 
<laughs> there's a little bit of a delay there too. So we have some rear cross traffic alert lag. So when I'm backing out of a parking space in a lot, and maybe I have two bigger vehicles on either side of me, I really depend on rear cross traffic alert to make sure that nobody is coming into my blind spots. And I was backing out of the parking lot one day and uh, lo and behold, the system did not pick up the vehicle that was behind me until it was actually behind me. And I think that is a little bit dangerous. If you're gonna have the feature, you should make it work the way it's supposed to work and not have lag. Hopefully that was just me. Hopefully that is not something that happens in every vehicle, but just something that I noticed that I didn't like. All right, so now it is time for that third thing that's driving me a little bit crazy. And I think it probably has to do a little bit with that auto stop start system or something, but I've noticed when I go into a parking garage and I have to take a ticket out of the meter so that I can enter the garage, so you pull up, you uh, open your window, and I have to take my seatbelt off because I'm short. So then I open my window to reach out to take the ticket and the vehicle either shuts off or puts itself in park. So I've had it happen three or four times now when all of a sudden, once it shut off, once it just put it in park, and I was like, well, what just happened here? And, and so that was just a little bit startling. I don't know why it did it, but it did it. And then I have to go through, you know, I'm flustered because I'm trying to get through the gates. There's somebody else behind me. And I'm like, what? I, I, and you have to turn your car back on in order to go. So not huge things, but those are the three things that have driven me a little bit crazy during this test period. Now that we are done with our bike ride, it is time for me to wrap up this review. And I just wanna sign off with a few driving impressions. So I already mentioned that I really like the engine power on the Q5. I think that it, once you get going, it has just the right amount of power to pass, to merge, to do anything that you need to do. As I mentioned, when I was talking about the things that annoy me, the problem for me is turbo lag when you go from a complete stop and you add in auto stop to all that and yeah forget about it <laughs> but outside of that I really like how this drives I really like how it handles you can totally tell this is a solid German made vehicle and it has a lot of sporting fun now in addition to those things I noted previously that I don't really like on this vehicle there are a couple of glitchy things and the first one is Apple CarPlay so this is a wireless system I think that's great very happy with that but what I'm a little bit bothered by is if I'm listening to Sirius radio and I exit the vehicle and I come back in, occasionally it defaults to my Apple CarPlay iTunes menu. So it doesn't go back to the iTunes that I was on. It takes me to my Apple CarPlay iTunes music and I don't like that, I don't want it. And it's a little bit weird. So along those lines, the other thing that's a little bit glitchy is the virtual cockpit. So I like to keep the map on behind the wheel and I'll get out of the vehicle, I'll be gone for an extended period of time, and when I come back in, my information is showing up behind the wheel. So <laughs> the vehicle doesn't always reboot the way that I left it, and to me that's just a little bit annoying and I don't quite understand why. I'm sure maybe there's a setting for that and once I would you know be with the car a little bit more I would understand it. I would figure it out but as it is I'm only in this vehicle for a couple of days and I haven't figured it out. So uh, outside of that and the three things that were driving me crazy I really like this car. None of those things by the way that I mentioned that you know make me a little bit crazy are deal breakers. That, like, they're all things that you can get over or move around or whatever, but you know, so I wouldn't consider those deal breakers. The fact that this is comfortable for two people, you can fit two bikes in the back, there's a lot of cubby holes and places to put things, I think that is a winning combination. You add to that the engine power and the excellent ride and handling, and I'm going to give the Audi Q5 Sportback two thumbs up. Thanks for sticking with me this far, and uh, I hope this gives you a little bit better idea of what this sport back body style is all about. Be sure to follow us on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com, and I will see you down the road.